Hey, Thomas here at Artisan, and um, this third video, I'm going to talk a little bit about mixing and the process of mixing when you're during a show and, and you have everything going on. You want to be able to focus basically on these faders to control the create creative aspects of the mix. Now, I have a couple of, of ground rules for mixing when, when I'm mixing shows. And they have to do with the natural level of vocal performance, um, level as in volume, you know, how loud they are. And there, there is a natural difference between speaking voice, even a projecting speaking voice in a theater, but it's particularly true here for our uh, kind of theater in the round where the audience is very close to the actors and to the performers. Um, people are going to naturally speak quieter, more quietly, less loud than when they're singing. And particularly, that's particularly true for the soloist when they sing, you know, you'd naturally, uh, when you have your, your prepared songs, you're just going to sing them loud, particularly if the music is playing loud enough and, um, and everything works together. So your singing voice is going to be louder than your speaking voice. And you want, you're going to want to kind of mirror that you don't want to you don't want to mix against that by pushing the dialogue louder and then pulling uh, the sung, the singing vocals back. So basically what I do is I set my bass level for dialogue roughly about this far back from the zero level. Uh, and then I push them when they're singing. And when they're singing... so. They might be singing, you know, different kind of material. And I have still a lot of headroom here where I can push louder when I need to have the featured singers, you know, have a line that is maybe not ideally in the range of their vocals where the line is a little bit quieter in their singing voice than other lines. So then I can still push that a lot without risking feedback or anything like that. And so I have that headroom there. So in general, I mix dialogue quieter than singing vocals. And um, the other aspect that's important to that is the question of how loud are you going to play the music? The music, let's start with the music that is playing for singing with it. So the songs, right? The songs where you have ensemble or soloists singing with the, with the music. Basically, the, the general principle, the ground principle for that is you should play the music as loud as possible without overwhelming the, the vocal. So it should sound to you a lot like a pop song or, you know, something that, you, that you're familiar with so that, uh, you know, from the radio or from, uh, from maybe recordings of Broadway uh, musicals where the music is usually quite loud and it has to be loud in order to support the singing so that the, the singer can actually hear the music well uh, and also to kind of drive the energy. You know, if you have, if you play the music very quietly, then the singers are going to kind of strain for um, hearing the music. They have to sing quieter in order to actually be able to sing to hear the music at all and that's not a dynamic that you want to support so you want to uh, play up the music as much as possible without overwhelming um, overwhelming the, uh, the the soloists or the, the vocal parts another aspect to that is sometimes um, so within a within a song you usually have portions of the song where text and lyrics and uh, the, the delivery of the story and the content is more important than in others. So as a rule of thumb, you can basically say your verses and maybe your introductions, your, your, your slow intro to a song, those are usually uh, the segments where the text and the lyrics are more important than in the choruses. Choruses are usually, they, they repeat, they're usually written in a way that is kind of more outgoing and less intricate and less complex as far as the content of the lyrics goes. So, so 
what that means is you want to deliver basically a good balance, a good solid level that is not too jerky, jumpy up and down between the the soloists singing their verses in this in the solos and compared to their compared to their choruses. Right? So in order so with that said, you want to have the vocals up pretty loud, particularly the solo, the solo is featured, and then put the music up so loud that you can hear the lyrics well in the verses. So that means the music might be quieter in the verses, and then you have you can actually drive it a little bit harder, hotter here, uh, the music when the choruses come come along, and and uh, you know everything kind of gets more energy, and the vocalist might be actually singing louder because the choruses are often written in a vocal range that is more uh, in really their loud range where it's easier for them to sing loud and to sing out. And so you, generally speaking, you want to be prepared to push the volume on the choruses more on the music. But again, always, you know, be guided by the principle of not never covering up the, the, the vocal. You never want to lose the vocal in the music. Okay, so the music always has to be a servant of the vocal. But this being a servant means it should drive the energy and you really, you know, embed the the vocal in the music as much as possible. And that means play the music as loud as you can without covering up or without disturbing the, the vocal. And then, you know, when it goes back and forth between te, um, a, a verse uh, and, and the next chorus, you actually have to make sometimes fairly dramatic moves with the with the music fader, um, so that you get the the correct balance between uh, the vocal and and the music going. So be prepared to not just you know set the music and forget it at the music level, um, but be prepared to make you know some surprisingly big moves on the music between verses and and choruses. Um, the next aspect is balancing multiple singers when they're singing at the same time. So usually when you have duets or trios, you would usually have, you know, two faders um, that have to kind of be, you have to listen to how they blend, get give them the right blend, make sure they are equally weighted, if that's what the music suggests, you know, if it's if it's really a duet where where they singing together, you want to make sure that you balance it out, and you have to do it really with your ears. You want to put your your fingers <clears throat> on both faders or all three faders, and know which one is which, and really listen to them and and you know feel your way to where it sounds exactly right, where they're nice and balanced, and no one is overpowering the other, and and they're good. They sound good together. And then with that, usually I use my other hand. I don't have my other hand free right now because I'm holding the, uh, the camera. So I usually have one hand on the music and the other hand on the, the vocal parts that need balancing. And I'm, I really, you know, I drive it a lot. I might push, boost one. If they have a line that I know is, you know, written kind of in a lower range of the vocal and it, it needs more help with amplification than, you know, when they're continuing to sing together later on. And, you know, again, you, you make way with the music by pulling it down. If there's a line that needs a little bit more help, you want to pull the music down a little bit, but then be prepared to rebalance it again and push the music up again once, uh, once you have things, um, material that is, you know, easier to understand and needs more energy and so forth. The other thing that's really important is to make a, create a good balance a good vocal balance between backup singers, so ensemble that is, you know, singing within the choruses of uh, of a larger number, and having the featured singers, the featured principals, still be featured, but without being overly loud. So, you basically you should think of that as the ensemble members, the ensemble members that are singing, they need to blend with the music track. And the soloists need to be able to stand out above both of them. And you will find that if you, when, whenever you have ensemble singing, there's so much additional energy coming 
into the vocals that you may require even louder boost on the vo on the music on the music track so it might become a fairly tricky way to balance this where um the, the what i would suggest is start with the ensemble not too loud so that you don't cover up the the principles with the ensemble and being able to play the music loud so that the music can support the ensemble singing and the principal standing out up above that okay now the more microphones you have open at the same time the more important it is to have really good control um, with these group faders and you might find your, yourself pulling them down quite a bit if there are already you know a bunch of people singing and so you might find that you know, you, you'll need something like this to be a good balance where music is really loud. Um, principles are quite loud and you're still kind of balancing them between each other, between them. And then ensemble singers are actually quite a bit lower than, than the others over here. So what you never want to do is just kind of, you know, take your, take your mic check levels and then just kind of set it and forget it, put, you know, the music too quiet and have these guys all up. What you find when you do this is that the the backup vocals will be way too loud and they will be covering up the soloists and they will all strain for hearing the music. This is what I kind of hear, you know, a lot, the way that is, is some, sometimes I hear some mixes. So, you know, so here's here's my explanation of what you should expect. And, you know, now that you understand the reasoning behind that, I think you will understand better when you actually go in there and you're in the situation and you listen to it, you will understand better how this actually plays out in a live situation.